comes across okay. And we have several of you that are watching over on YouTube. So let me just make sure everywhere is where we're supposed to be. And it looks like we are. So sorry for the very long intro, but here we are. Um, if you have not been with us before live, I'm Zakia of Live Soap School, as well as Natural Soap by Zakia. And what we are doing today is making our very own African black soap. I don't know how many of you know, but Af um, Baraka actually carries several African black soaps. And I'm gonna see if anything is dropping. Check over here. It doesn't look like we have any dropping. And there we go. John is here. John, very good to see you. And we also have Sylvia checking in. So let me see. I got my new thing over here. Let's see. Will that go? No, I don't know. We'll see. All right. So we do have um, African black soap from Baraka Shea Butter. Now, what was new to me is they actually have different varieties of the African black soap. So there is this one here. It has mango. There is also banana. There's just the regular organic shea butter as well. Tammy, long time no see, hello. There's also a mixed fruit. And then there is also the traditional shea butter um, version as well. So there are several ones. And I said, I know a lot of people wonder what it is that you can do with African black soap. I will tell you that Nyla actually uses African black soap for washing her face. You know, teenagers, acne prone. Um, it just gives a really good cleanse, especially if you're oily. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Anne. Let's see. Will that bring your comment up? No, it will not. So I'm just going to press the button there so I can bring you on screen so everyone can see you and say, hey, Anne, how you doing? Um, I am going to go ahead and switch you all. Let's see. That one works, but that one does not. I'm going to switch you guys to overhead so you can see what we have on the counter. So first things first, of course, you are going to need some African black soap. Um, we do love the Baraka African black soap. When I was in Ghana, the women actually made some for me and brought it to us. And so I, I'm hoping that on this broadcast, you're able to see the consistency of it. There are a lot of um, fake African black soaps that are out there. And I want you to see the texture and consistency of true authentic black soap. So aside from that, you're going to need distilled water. Whenever you are making any kind of cosmetic products, you want to use distilled water in it because it has all of the impurities stripped from it. You don't want to use purified water. You don't want to use spring water. You don't want to use well water. As much as humanly possible, you want to get yourself some distilled water. We're also going to be using some aloe vera juice. The entire recipe is in the description. And of course, like normal, what we will do is we will say what the measurements are as we are going along. Good evening from Victorville. We have Lorraine checking in. So you want to use some aloe vera juice as well. Additionally, we do have some oils. Let me pull up our recipe here. So we are using some flaxseed oil, not a whole lot. We're also using some glycerin. We're also using some essential oil. We did an essential oil blend of tea tree, peppermint, and rosemary, all for the various properties that they offer the skin. Additionally, we're going to be using some polysorbate 80. And the reason we're doing that, hello from Montreal, hello. Um, the reason we are actually doing that with the polysorbate 80 what do we know from back in the day chemistry classes? Water and oil do not mix. Polysorbate 80 is what's going to give us that suspension and also helps us to bind the water and the oil-based ingredients. So we're going to be using some polysorbate 80. We're also going to be using some xanthan gum. And we're using the xanthan gum so that we can thicken it up so that it's not such a watery consistency. You don't have to use that, but I highly recommend it if you want more of a consistency that you're used to when you are using a shampoo. And last but not least, because this product does have water in it, we are going to be using some preservative. Let me switch the camera because I need to make sure you guys understand 
the importance of a preservative. So whenever you have a product that's going to be sitting and you actually have water included in that product, it is so important to add a preservative. And you have to add the right preservative depending on what the recipe is that you're using. What the pH is is going to impact it. If it's a water and oil solution or an oil and water solution, what temperature you can add that preservative. We are going to be using Liquid Germal Plus. Um, that one is a broad spectrum preservative that will prevent any um, bacteria from growing, any microbes from growing in there. Um, if you don't have a preservative, let's say you are someone who is saying, you know what, Zakia, I just want to make this for myself at home. I'm going to do a small amount. It's only going to be a one wash kind of situation. You can get away with no preservative. If by any chance what you are making is going to go longer than two or three days, you want to make sure that you include a preservative in it especially because we have so much water in this particular recipe. So we all agree, if we make this shampoo and it's not just for us, we're gonna use it in one use, we are going to invest in a preservative. And when you hear the percentage of how, how small an amount of preservative is needed, there's no reason not to include that preservative in what it is that you are making. Deal? I heard you all say deal from the other side. But I see we have Desi, and I know I pronounced your name the right time the last time. I'm not going to try it again the second time with your last name. From Montreal checking in. We have Lorraine checking in from California, also known as Victorville. Well, it's not also known as. Victorville in California. Not sure where you're from, Anne. Nicole, good to see you as well. But everybody, thank you for joining. If you are catching this on the replay, thank you for coming back. If you're catching this live, be sure to talk to me while you are here so I don't feel like I'm all by my lonesome. Jenny is my real name. Yes, Jenny. Darn it. I can get that one. All right. So first things first, we want to measure out our African black soap. So I'm going to put our freshly washed um, container on here. Draw it out with a little paper towel. Hey, Nicole, good to see you, my dear. Thank you for checking in. All right. I'm going to get that dried. And by the way, this recipe that we are making this evening is going to give us, I want to say, 13 ounces of shampoo, which isn't a whole lot. Um, I definitely like to use it in my locks because it is definitely a clarifying shampoo. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off some of the African black soup. This particular recipe calls for 45 grams of the African black soup. I highly recommend that you invest in a kitchen scale. It does not have to be this one. Um, this one is the KD8000. I've mentioned on other broadcasts, the reason why I like this one in particular is it measures in grams as well as ounces. And then it also has a plug. So you never have to worry about the batteries dying in the middle of you measuring out your ingredients. Now, I'm just gonna take this knife here. We were using it a little bit earlier today because I did the magic of TV for all of you. We do already have some already made and mixed up. But I wanted to kind of show you how this goes. If you want to save yourself some time with the African black soap, cut it into smaller pieces. You don't want to cut really big chunks because it's going to take longer to dissolve in your distilled water and aloe vera juice. So as I cut it down, you'll see how it comes right off. It's not a hard consistency. It kind of bends. And the one thing I want you all to notice is African black soap is not black. If you are buying African black soap and it's 100% black through and through, you probably do not have true black soap. It was probably made with a mica or a titanium dioxide, not a titanium dioxide, um, an activated charcoal. Anne is from beautiful Guyana in South America. Well, hello, Anne. Thank you for letting me know. All right, so we have Montreal, 
We have California and South America. Let's see if we can get some, well, it's about 7 a.m. over in Ghana right now. They're 12 hours ahead. So maybe not tonight, but maybe if we do an afternoon broadcast, that might be a little bit better. All right, so what we'll do is we'll cut quite a bit of this. Hey, Kita Kita, how are you? And I'm just trying to cut it into smaller pieces. I don't know if you guys can see that. And one thing, my kitchen scale does cut off if there's no action. You got to give it some action because it's trying to save power, I guess. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and get it right into our bowl. That's only 15 grams. So what I'll do... Instead of trying to scoop that way, I will pick up our parchment paper and dump her in just like that. And we'll go back to cutting. But I'm hoping I don't have my zoom tool on here that you can see what that texture is like on here. And I'll just keep going down. Twenty-eight grams. Oh well, over here. I gotta call you. Are you working today? I can call you after the broadcast, my dear. All right, let's get a little bit more. We need about fifteen more grams of the African black soap. We're at forty-four. Look at it. Still 44. I went over. We're at 46 grams, okay? So now that we have the cut up um, African black soap, you would want to cut it in smaller pieces. You don't have to. It will fully dissolve in the recipe that I'm going to give you here. So we have our 46 grams. The next thing that we want to measure out is our water as well as our aloe vera juice. So for the water, we are going to use 170 grams. Let's tear our scale out. This is the most annoying part. It just does what it wants. Come on. I'm at 179, give or take a few, right? <laughs> I'm at 179. And then for our aloe vera juice, we're going to use 57 grams. And then I went over with that one too, 61. Tasha in the house. Hello there. How are you, Keita? I did not miss you. I'm very good to see you as well. And Lorraine is saying, hey, hey, hey. Hey, everybody. Hey everybody, so good to see you all. I'm going to go and pop this in the microwave because I want it scorching hot. You don't need it scorching hot, but that's what we're gonna do. So give me one moment, I'm going to put this in the microwave. If you have not already said where you are watching from, now is a wonderful time to do exactly that. And if you are already here and you've already said that, what are you planning for Thanksgiving? And I know we have some people who aren't in the U.S. and you don't necessarily celebrate Thanksgiving, but that's okay. Um, always interested to see that. Denver, Colorado. Very good to have you. Pittsburgh, Nicole, you're very close. I'm in Philadelphia. You're very, very, very close, which is always good. So we have our um, water and aloe vera that is currently melt, not melting, warming up in the microwave. So some people have asked, like, so why would you use the African black soap? Why are you using the aloe vera juice? First things first, the distilled water that we use, the point of that is to make sure that we don't have any impurities, nothing excess in the water. In terms of the African black soap, like I mentioned, it is wonderful as a clarifying shampoo. Um, and then also, it has been used in Africa for centuries guys um when we were in ghana we got a chance to see you guys can't see me connecticut is here 
while we have that melting away, I will actually come back on camera. Um, while we were in Ghana, we got a chance to see a palm forest, a cocoa forest, and a shea forest. Most African black soap is made with the ash from those various plants. And so um, they reuse a lot of what they already have and they make this magical, magical soap. And it suds amazingly or lathers amazingly, depending on how you want to call it. Um, and so I really like the African black soap, particularly for that. I cannot make it because I can't get my hand on plantain leaves. Um, and I don't really know how to do the conversion to um, make it work. Hey, Drea, how are you? We now have that ending. And I'll show you that. And then we're going to have the magic of TV happen right before your eyes. So you have your aloe vera juice and you have your distilled water. I don't need to put it on the scale. Let's put that right up under there. And I will switch you guys back to the overhead camera. Let's make sure... We're good. All right. So now what we're going to do is simply pour the hot aloe vera juice as well as the water right on top of the African black soap. You want to then go ahead and take your spatula and give it a little bit of a stir just to encourage it to do its thing, do its thing, do its thing. I don't know if you guys can see the suds already appearing on there. But honestly, if you didn't want to do anything else, you could just let the African black soap dissolve in this distilled water and aloe vera, and you could use this just as a shampoo the way it is. But of course, we got to be queen extra over here. So we are going to add a few other elements to it to make it our own. And you can absolutely do the same exact thing. So I'm going to put this up here so you can kind of watch that do it's dissolving and once it's dissolved it'll go to this you see that magic right there well it wouldn't really it doesn't work because I don't have the exact same <laughs> I don't have this exact same container and that container is still sitting there um, but here is what it looks like once it's completely dissolved it goes to um, kind of like a dark dark brown color it's not, it looks black on screen, but hopefully when it goes against that white, you can see the difference there. So we have that. The next thing that we are going to add to that is our flaxseed oil. Now, the reason we're adding the flaxseed oil is it does help with the elasticity of the hair. So, you know, that buoyancy or that bounce back that a lot of people like to have. It also strengthens and improves the appearance of the hair. And for the flaxseed oil, we are adding 30 grams. Now, this flaxseed oil is also the reason why we are adding in the polysorbate 80. Because as you can see, that oil is just sitting right there at the top of the melted water in the African black soap. So we got our flaxseed oil in. The next thing that we're going to add is our glycerin. Now, for the glycerin, we are going to be adding to that our xanthan gum. The xanthan gum is what we are using in order to thicken the shampoo. Otherwise, it would be a very watery consistency. Nothing wrong with the watery consistency. My mom actually makes um, an African black shampoo and she does not add any xanthan gum, but we just want it to be a little bit thicker. Annie, I still have you up there, but everybody knows you're here, and thank you for being here. Um, so we don't want to just pour the xanthan gum right into the African black soap shampoo. What we want to do is we want to mix this in with the glycerin so that it combines a little bit better. So I'm going to grab our little handy-dandy chopstick skewer here, pour it in, and then we're going to mix it up. And that's what we're going to pour into the soap here. And the xanthan gum 
We only needed four grams of that. And I should also mention, we also put our preservative in there. And for the preservative, we only needed two grams, only two grams. So it's such a small amount. And for the amount of protection that you get with your product, it's just no reason why you don't want to add your preservative in there. So we're going to pour that right into the African black soap shampoo. <laughs> the African black soap shampoo. Get it all in. And keep on stirring. Next up, we're going to go ahead and add in the polysorbate 80. Now, remember I mentioned the polysorbate 80 is what we are using to make sure that the water and the oil stay binded and don't separate. Otherwise, you're just going to have oil at the top. Remember, we added that flaxseed oil. You're going to have that oil at the top of your shampoo and then the water at the bottom. And you want a completely emulsified or combined shampoo. So we're going to pour that in. Scrape her out. And keep on stirring. I do typically like to use like a mini whisk for this. But I only have my really big whisk. Seems to be mixing all right. And then the last thing that we're going to be adding to this is our essential oil blend. The essential oil blend we are using is the tea tree. Um, tea tree helps to prevent any buildup in the hair. Peppermint helps to stimulate any hair growth. And then the rosemary is going to stimulate the circulation in the scalp. So those three combined are going to give our shampoo a scent, but then it's also performing double duty from the, um, the properties of those essential oils. And it's already starting to get a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in last. And you're probably saying, you're telling us all of this, but what is the percentage or what are the percentages or how much because aloe vera is moisturizing by adding it, does it help with the dryness of African black soap? Great point, Sylvia. Very good point. So what we're trying to do with the aloe vera is to counteract some of the drying effect of African black soap. We're typically using this as a clarifying shampoo. So we do want it to kind of strip the hair, but we don't want it to be so stripped that it ends up drying the hair out. So by adding that glycerin, by adding the aloe vera, and then also adding that flaxseed oil, it's kind of like the super fatting that we're doing in soap making. Um, we don't have to do any saponification with this. African black soap is completely ready to go on its own with no help from us in terms of adding any additional lye or anything like that. Great, great point. And it has all the natural surfactants that you would need to create the lather for your soap and shampoo. All right, so from there, that is easy peasy. There's no one who is watching this broadcast who cannot do what it is that I just did. We are using the African black soap and I'm gonna give you the recipe again or for the first time, because I don't think I've actually mentioned it, we used 45 grams of the African black soap here. And to that, what we did was we cut it into very, very small pieces to help it to dissolve. From there, we measured out our distilled water, which was 170 grams. And to that, we added 57 grams of aloe vera juice. We warm that up. You don't have to have it boiling, but you just want it warm to encourage the African black soap to dissolve in there. Um, you'll typically, it'll take about an hour to an hour and a half for it to completely dissolve. Once it's dissolved, you can go ahead and either bottle it up and use it as is. It'll be a completely clarifying shampoo, but we wanted to spice it up a bit. <laughs> spice it up a bit. So we added some flaxseed oil primarily for the moisture and the elasticity. We also added the glycerin because glycerin helps to pull moisture from the air. It's a natural humectant. We also did the polysorbate 80 because we have that 
um, flaxseed oil in here and we didn't want that to remain separated and suspended from the remainder of the shampoo recipe. We also did the xanthan gum, which is going to help us to thicken this up so it's a little bit more of a consistency of that of a shampoo. As it cools, it will get thicker. And then the liquid dermal plus is what we added as the preservative. Um, again, if you don't need to have a preservative, the only reason that is, is you're doing a single use of the shampoo or two days. That's the only reason. Um, what are the grams? Marissa, I am so sorry. I said I'm going to give you the recipe and still just listed them out. So in terms of the grams, for the black soap, we have 45 grams. For the distilled water, we have 170 grams. For the aloe vera juice, we have 57 grams. For the flaxseed oil, we have 30 grams. For the glycerin, we have 60 grams. For the fragrance, seven grams. So that can be your essential oil blend or your um, fragrance oils. Your polysorbate 80 was 43 grams. Your xanthan gum is four grams. And then your liquid germal plus we have at two grams. Now I can come back and give you the percentages in case you wanna change the formulation, but let me show you how we're gonna just go ahead and pour this in. You want something with a lip on it so you don't lose too much of your shampoo and you're just gonna pour it into your container. Went a little over. And then hopefully, you're very welcome. Hopefully you can see that. I am gonna put the lid on it, but you generally would not put the lid on it because if it's still warm, that condensation is gonna form water bubbles. So you want it to cool completely before you put your lid on it. And before you use it, you just wanna give it a good shake. And so I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. Hopefully you guys can see those. Can you repeat the three essential oils and the benefits? Absolutely, here, I'll come back. Let's come to this camera. So whenever you're out, so you, you can keep this right in your shower and then you just shake them up just like that. Um, so the three essential oil blend, and I did a equal portion for each one. It was 2.5, 2.5, and then two. So it was 2.5 grams of the tea tree essential oil. Um, tea tree does help to prevent buildup. When I first got my sister locks, the shampoo that they gave me had tea tree in it. And the main reason for that is we don't use any products aside from shampoo in our sister locks. Um, I'll tell you about pH in one second, but you can test it, but you don't have to. Um, what else did we use? Peppermint. So peppermint helps to stimulate hair growth as well as the hair follicles. And then we also use rosemary because that helps to stimulate the scalp. So it's really all three of those. It was 2.5 grams of the tea tree essential oil, helping to eliminate that buildup. Peppermint for um, increasing the circulation in the hair. Um, and then also the rosemary for the scalp. Do we need to test the pH or is the pH at a good level once created? We have not added anything to this that's going to impact the pH of the hair. Typically, African black soap has a pH between six and nine, which is fine for the hair. Um, the one thing about African black soap by itself with nothing added to it is it can be extremely drying. Um, and I don't mean like drying to the point where your skin is peeling off. Um, and then also one other benefit is preventing dandruff or if you have really itchy scalp, that blend of essential oils is great as well. Um, the shelf life. With the preservative, this has a shelf life of up to one year. Without a preservative, do not go beyond three days. And if you do go beyond three days, just put it in the refrigerator between each use, but don't have it for more than a week because you have water in here that is going to encourage microbe growth. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, Mar Mauricia, did I answer your question about needing to test the pH or is the pH good at the level it's created? I think I did, but I feel like I talk a million miles per minute. But this is what we end up with, guys, and you can have this right in your shower. 
So when you're ready to wash your hair, you can do so with the um, African Black Soap Clarifying Shampoo. I always say clarifying because I don't want you to think you're going to have this super luxurious moisturizing shampoo. Yay! Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. So if you have any questions at all, I do come back and I do see when you guys post them on either YouTube or Facebook. But you can pick up your African Black Soap by going to Baraka Shea Butter. I do hope that you will give it a try. And then also, wherever you get your shea butter, you want to make sure, not your shea butter, Af Baraka Shea Butter, your African Black Soap, you want to make sure that it's true, authentic Black Soap. And two of the telltale signs on whether or not it's authentic or not is the texture of it. It should almost crumble in your hand once you cut it off. The other thing is the color. It should not have a completely consistent black color around. It'll typically be brown at the top, but then when you cut into it, it's going to have very different colors um, in there. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Zakia Ringgold, and you just saw just how easy it is to have your own shampoo at home um, especially if you somebody with locks. Um, this is great for locks because we don't put oil, we don't put conditioner in our hair, but there is buildup. Um, and to prevent that, African black soap is a great way to do so. Um, my son has dreadlocks. Yes, absolutely. Um, this helps to get lint out of my hair because, you know, I kind of wear sweaters like this and it's kind of like just rubbing on there. But it's good for all hair types. If you have oily hair, definitely try this. If you have locks, try it as well. If you find that your hair or your scalp is itchy or you have a lot of buildup in there because product junkieism is a thing, I am recovering from all of the products that I did when I was a loose natural. And, um, you know, there's the co-washing, there's the lock method, there's all the things that you do, like with the leave-in conditioners, you put the oil on on top, you put your stylers on, you put your gel in, you might co-wash it because you don't want to shampoo it. After a while, there's a lot of product that is built up in your hair. Using a shampoo like this will help to get all of that out. Just follow it up with a really good conditioner. and You'll have a really clean scalp and a clean hair. Your hair cannot thrive if the scalp is dirty. And so you do want to do a clarifying shampoo at least once a month. And for my lock folks, you especially when I use a clarifying shampoo like me. All right, everybody. Herbal Root Woman, you are very welcome. Nicole, you are very welcome. Wherever you are watching, be sure to like, subscribe, share, follow. Head over to Baraka Shea Butter if you are interested in getting your very own African Black Soap. And if you are in Philadelphia or very close to Philadelphia, you don't mind driving, we are hosting our very first pop-up shop on November the 28th, where you'll be able to come. Kids will be able to make bath bombs and sugar scrubs, melt and pour soap. It'll be pretty fun. Lorraine, we need the shampoo. I can add this into your order, or at least one of them. I'll send one of these with your order because you guys have ordered the peppermint soap. Um, Laura and Lorraine ordered two peppermint soaps. I'm currently running a special or if you buy two, you get another one free. So that will be coming because we now have labels to put on all of our products. So I'm Zakia Ringgold of LiveSoapSchool.com, NaturalSoapByZakia.com. All of you that are watching on hashtag Baraka Clan, very good to see you. And all of you that are watching on Soap Nation, very good to have you here. I need them, says Tammy. You guys going to have me make some more. All right. I'll be making more, but you know how to do it yourself. Bye, everybody. Gotta find the finish. See you later.